my name's Tony, and I'm a skier. I love skiing. It brings me a great deal of joy. I particularly like skiing with my family. It's strange to introduce yourself with your passion. A lot of people introduce themselves with what they do for a living. And sometimes that's their passion. But oftentimes it's what they do to pay the bills. I'm a property researcher for a global property services company. But we are so much more than what we do for a living. I'm a husband, I'm a father, I'm a son, I'm a brother. I'm a photographer and a writer and a traveller. I travel a lot for work. I was in the back of a taxi in Singapore. I was talking to the taxi driver about travelling and about going on holiday. I said, where would you like to go on holiday? He said he wanted to go to the snow. I said, wow. Most people want to go to the beach or to a famous city. Why do you want to go to the snow? He says, I want to know what it feels like to be cold. Yeah. I thought, right. If you lived somewhere where it was 30 degrees every day, you probably would. You'd want to go and build a snowman and throw a snowball and do tobogganing and do all of that stuff that is so wonderful about the snow. But somebody told me one day all the snow is going to be gone. Now, selfishly for me, that means no more skiing with the family. It also means that the taxi driver from Singapore won't know what it's like to be cold and that all of us will lose something of joy and beauty in the world. And not just that, all the species on the planet that rely on that habitat won't have that. But what if I told you that we could save money, slash carbon emissions, and it wouldn't cost a cent, guaranteed? Would you do it? I'm not asking you to lay down your life. I'm not asking you to run through the streets naked. <laughs> this is something you can do at home. You can go home tonight and do this. It's that easy. Everyone can do it. You, your family, your friends, everybody you know can do this from the safety, comfort and privacy of their own home. So come with me on this journey and let's see if we can do something to save the snow. So I'm a bit weird. I like to turn problems into mathematical equations because it gives a clarity to the problems and maybe presents a solution. Now this doesn't work all the time and sometimes it's just downright unhelpful. So be careful about trying this at home. But stick with me on this one. So I did two years of research into the environment and climate change for my work. And this is the equation I came up with. P times E equals C. People times energy equals carbon emissions. Now, that's a really simple equation for what is a very, very complicated issue. So let's start with P, people. Barack Obama is interviewing David Attenborough. It's a documentary. The other way around. Bizarre. Really weird and fantastic to watch. They get to the end and Barack Obama asks Attenborough, so what's the problem? Or how are we going to fix this? What's the solutions? And Attenborough said, the problem is people, the population. Because we've gone from 2 billion people to 7 billion people in 100 years. And the planet can't adapt. Now, that's all very well and good. Left to our own devices, we're not going to go from 7 billion down to 2 billion people. Because, surprisingly, that's not very popular. <laughs> it's not particularly friendly. So that's not going to float. Now, Mother Nature may do that for us. And that's the scary bit. If Mother Nature starts on a rampage to bring the population down, Mother Nature will go after the vulnerable people on the planet first those marginalised people on the planet. 
and then march on from there. But we'll come back to Mother Nature. Let's look at E, energy. And we've all heard this, haven't we, for 30 years. And we'll hear it probably for the next 30 years. Fossil fuels versus renewables. The costs, the benefits, the science, the vested interests. And we're jaded. And we feel dispirited and detached and not capable of doing anything. And I've got something we can all do. It's so simple. It's so low-hanging fruit that you have to bend all the way down to pick it up. It's that easy. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to change the world. And we start here today. Because I looked at this and I said, if making P smaller works, then surely making E smaller has to work too. So why don't we use less energy? And yes, switch the types of energy that we use, but use less, make E smaller. So I'm there and I'll look into it. What's all this energy that we're using? And it turns out that where we live and where we work use an enormous amount of energy. In Australia, 40% of all energy use is consumed by the built environment. Ah, light bulb moment. The built environment. That's me. Property research. That's my neck of the woods. What's going on? What is all this energy use? Well, it turns out that in the built environment, a lot of the energy is used to heat and cool the buildings that we occupy. So I dug deeper. And it turns out that the built environment is heated and cooled to a fixed 22 degrees, regardless of the temperature outside. 22 degrees. What's that about? Well, it turns out that that's the thermal comfort level of a 44-year-old man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I kid you not. And it was decided by the Americans in the 1950s. And it's been that way ever since. Now, last time I looked around, there weren't uh, an abundance of 44-year-old men around. And if there were, there'd be 45 the next year and 46 and so on. So they would cease to be what was being catered for. You see, your thermal comfort level is a function of whether you're tall or short, whether you're fat or skinny, your age, and whether you're male or female. It's why when it's 30 degrees outside, I walk into my reception at work and there's my receptionist, Tammy, sitting there with a scarf, frozen to death. <laughs> you and I adapt. We look at the weather app, check out the newspaper, the television, the radio, or we ask somebody, what's the weather going to be today? And we dress accordingly. Why don't we ask our built environment to do the same? So instead of being a fixed 22 degrees, make it 19 to 25. Me, for my part, I don't heat my house past 19 and I don't cool it below 25. The manufacturers of the machines that do that recommend 19 to 25 and yet we're stuck in 22. So I'm sitting there saying, all right, is this meaningful if we did this? Would it matter? Well, the United Nations in its headquarter in New York did a publicity stunt in 2008, and they did just that. They changed the range, and they estimated the savings at 100,000 US dollars in a month. And I thought, OK, that's property, that's me. All right, how many buildings are there? How many shopping centres are there? Let's add all of this up and speak to an engineer, do the maths. And in Australia, if we did that in the office buildings and the shopping centres, we'd save $100 million a year and slash carbon emissions by 300,000 tonnes, guaranteed, and it wouldn't cost a cent. 
It's that simple to make a 19 to 25 degree world. And we can all do it. I wrote a book on gambling. So I know a bit about probability and outcomes. And I look at this, and again, let's do the equation. So let's do the maths on this. Let's have a look at what it looks like. So we've got the environmentalists on one side, and we've got the skeptics on the other. Do something, do nothing, and they're either going to be right or wrong. So let's go with the environmentalists and let's do something, anything. And there's a chance that we make the world a better place and we do our job as stewards and caretakers of the planet for the next generation and for all the other species on the planet. And it's good. That's great. Or we go with the sceptics and we do nothing. Now, if they're right and it's all a load of baloney, fine. We mosey on down the road, carry on regardless. But if they're wrong, Mother Nature comes along and it gets really messy. Who wants to bet on that? Who wants to take a chance that doing nothing will be OK? And the answer is obviously everybody. Nobody wants to bet there. So we should do something. We should certainly start living in a 19 to 25 world. And we can all do it. And we can start here today and take it out into the world. And it costs us nothing. And maybe, just maybe, we can save the snow. And that taxi driver can know what it feels like to be cold. And me, I can go skiing with my kids. Thank you. <laughs>